The Navy birthday is special to me in a couple of ways. The most obvious and, and somewhat cliche is the uh, adage that the Navy is older than the country. The, the Navy's birthday predates you know, the signing of the Declaration of Independence, 1776 and all of that. And that is a point of pride. Um, even before the United States was a country, there was a broad realization that a maritime nation separated from most of the rest of the world uh, by oceans needed to be a maritime nation and needed to be able to protect itself on the high seas. And so the existence of what led into being the U.S. Navy uh, with such a long lineage behind it is an acknowledgement of that fact. The number to the birthday and uh, for 246 years we've been providing security to our borders, to our nation, and projecting power and having a presence forward uh, to uh, maintain stability um, you know, beyond our borders and working with our partners. That I'm a part of a rich and efficient fighting force that's still in existence to protect our national interest. The opportunity to celebrate the greatest Navy in this world. It's, it's a time for us to look back on why this Navy was created. Its purpose to maintain freedom of the sea lanes, to maintain our interests around the world through that sea power. One of the Navy's most historical milestones that I'm most proud of actually resonates with me uh, as a diver, and that was uh, really being on the leading edge of driving to uh, the boundaries um, of the man in the sea. Uh, back in the 1960s, uh, they created a program called Sea Lab, and uh, the original Sea Lab is actually here in Panama City Beach at the Man in the Sea Museum. It was a program that now allowed divers to go uh, to depth and work on projects and stay there for days and weeks at a time. Um, so the science with diving is depending on the depth that you go to, um, the deeper you go, the shorter amount of time you can go down there without having to do what's called decompression. Um, and uh, some, some uh, tasks require you to remain there for longer than short periods of time. So it was really the Navy that looked into the ability to create these underwater habitats and basically become a home for these divers to remain at for long periods of time. The transformation of the Navy um, at the beginning of World War II and the Battle of Midway where we transitioned from realizing that was a, a battleship based fleet to an aircraft carrier based fleet and that the United States Navy was at the forefront of that, figuring that out. That's one example of what of many where the U.S. Navy has been at the forefront of discovering that the world is not static, things change, and the organization that adopts the correct change fastest is one that will win. And the Navy's been at the forefront of that many times. The Navy was willing to change and bring more diversity. The Golden 13. Back in uh, 1944, uh, with the commissioning of the first black officers in the United States Navy, uh, they were dubbed the Golden 13. Um, in actuality, it was about 16 enlisted servicemen uh, were recruited to participate in this officer training out in Great Lakes. Uh, all 16 of them passed through the training and 13 of them were commissioned as officers. So I know that without their commitment, without their dedication to a cause, um, that I wouldn't be able to be an officer in the United States Navy today or being, uh, being blessed with the opportunity of command. Every day I put on this uniform, what comes to my mind is the American flag and the freedom that it represents and that this cloth represents that. Service to my country and also protection for those that I love. I uh, don't take for granted the fact that um, for us, us to enjoy a lot of the comforts that we have, uh, people had to sacrifice for that. And so whenever I put the uniform on, I realize I'm a part of that legacy and that um, I do it to uh, carry it forward or pay it back. 
It's definitely an artifact of the past in a lot of cases. And that in some ways is anchoring in that the Navy has maintained its role and its traditions and its distinctiveness as it, you know, anybody who sees me wearing a Navy uniform knows I'm a member of the Navy and they know exactly what that means and that, that khaki uniform, those whites, uh, even the, the NWUs conveys that I am part of a group of people who do a certain thing. It's humbling when I look to the left and to the right of me and see you know, my brothers and sisters in arms uh, wearing the same cloth as I do with all one mindset of you know, protecting, defending our nation, holding the values of our constitution. Um, it's, uh, it's awesome. So I joined the Navy because I wanted to become part of something that was bigger than myself and also to see the world. Uh, I'm from a small island, and so uh, joining the Navy gave me an opportunity to kind of broaden my perspective and also broaden my viewpoint on life. To be able to have a career, two, get the GI Bill so I can continue my education, and, and then three, to serve. Like a lot of people did because it was a family thing. Um, my dad had been in nuclear submarines right out of college. And although he only served active duty for four years, that conditioned the plaques on the wall and the dinner table conversations and a lot of how he lived his life. And I think from a very young age, I just always sort of assumed I'd join the Navy. When I was uh, in seventh grade, I had the opportunity to witness my brother graduate from the Naval Academy. And I got to go out to Annapolis, Maryland and uh, see all of his classmates um, experience uh, the impressive uh, grounds of the Naval Academy, but also just really get to see the, uh, the bond and the brotherhood and sisterhood that uh, was displayed from, from my brother's classmates and the excitement that they had to go out and, and serve. Out of honor, courage, and commitment, the one that re resonates the most with me is honor. Honoring our, our ancestors honoring our commitment to this country, honoring our oath, and honoring our families. Courage. Um, and the reason is uh, when we make an oath, um, all, every service member um, is basically saying that they're willing um, to put their life on the line for their country. Um, and that's, that's, uh, that takes courage. And uh, I think, uh, you know, that may be me one day, that may be someone, um, that may be me sending someone else one day. The military in, in particular relies on courage in the face of hardship and even, you know, threats to life and life and limb. And that's, I wouldn't say unique, but certainly is something that is an aspect of the military that is undeniable and separates it from most careers. Commitment, because I'm inherently an idealistic person, um, I believe in rules, I believe in order, I believe in laws because I believe they promote uh, fairness. And so uh, commitment involves being dedicated to a cause and having the perseverance to see it through. As a leader, ensuring the Navy continues to be a, a lethal fighting force and to continue to, to operate the way it does is by ensuring our sailors have all the tools that they need to be able to make changes whether it's from research and development that we do here at this base with NSWC or diving training that the dive school does, all that keeps this Navy relevant and able to do its job. By ensuring that my command uh, continuously expands the advantage of the warfighter in the undersea and extreme environments by the work that we do. Uh, all of the work that we do at our command uh, pushes capability forward. We're inherently an experimental command, so we're always pushing the envelope to provide more capability and ingenuity to the fleet. So it's encouraging folks to continually develop their competence, but also there's a leadership component to that. And uh, you gotta build leaders. You gotta build leaders that are sound in decision-making, leaders that can um, uh, lead folks in, in, in tough times, and sometimes there's not an easy answer. Um, so I think a part of that is, is uh, mentorship, and that's something I hold deep, near and dear to my heart is continually mentoring these folks and uh, making them smart uh, mentally up here um, and being people that can we can rely on to make good decisions um, in the fit in the, in the in the future because it's really that elite decision making and our ability to outsmart our enemies in combat uh, that are going to give us a uh, an edge foster people's growth encourage and set the stage for the folks who who do the actual work the actual engineering work and testing work and sustainment and support 
fleet, fleet interaction, going out there on the waterfront and actually you know, putting hands to wrench and hands to the plan, designing things, testing things and making sure that they're gonna work. Um, I don't know, do any of those things. But as a leader, I can make sh sure to the best of my ability that the people who do those have the best possible work environment and the best support and are encouraged and aware of the importance of what they do so they're, uh, they're enthusiastic about it and want to keep going. I feel very proud of the rich heritage that we have in the Navy and that I've been able to have just a small part of it. And granted, I've done this for 33 years, but the Navy will continue to go on long after I'm gone, just as it continues to go on before I ever came in. So I'm very, very happy that we're here to make that difference. And it's really, you know, the glue that keeps, you know, folks in uniform together, you know, across generations. You know, when I think about uh, uh, some of the folks that served before me, you know, in World War II, the war in the Pacific, um, or the tanker wars, or, you know, wars even before that, um, and the bravery and courage and, uh, and, um, uh, just the, um, it's humbling to think about those folks. And I wonder sometimes if I was in their shoes, um, if I'd be able to do what they did. Um, so it's that heritage, I think, that really bonds us together, um, you know, whether it was in the 1800s, 1900s, or, or today. I feel a sense of connectedness as part of the rich heritage of the Navy. Certainly the Navy has um, a long and connected history. I think it's different from uh, friends of mine that have been in the Army, for example, where they can trace back their unit's lineage back to the Civil War and back to, you know, even before that in some cases. Uh, certainly with the Navy, ships come and go, commands come and go, uh, and loyalty to a particular hull or base or command uh, passes as soon as that does. Um, so in my in my case, the loyalty and the sense of heritage is more to the Navy as a whole. It simply just makes me feel very, very proud. I know that when I retire, I have done my part and uh, I'm very grateful and blessed to have the opportunity to do so. Since October 13th, 1775, sailors have stood the watch across the world protecting America's freedoms. Happy 246th birthday. Happy 246th birthday. Happy 246th birthday. Happy 246th birthday, birthday U.S. Navy.